Hello everybody, this is Yank Kell. You may know me as Hope Betrayed. How are you doing? Um, today we're going to be taking a look at the Dungeons & Dragons campaign that I'm currently DMing. Uh, we recently had a couple deaths, so we're taking a sort of hiatus. Um, you can call it a character creation moment. <clears throat> and so while we do that, I'm actually going to be publishing this video showing you exactly how the campaign works. Uh, remember, it is a homebrew campaign, and we did a lot of things differently, and you'll see exactly how that translates on paper. Have fun! Okay, so here we have the Valley of Ends character sheet. Uh, basically, everybody's character sheet is here, and the way we did things, uh, as has been kind of explained in some of our videos, um, we have a set of non-damage stats you see right here. And these are Strength, Constitution, Dexterity, Intellect, Wisdom, and Charisma. Obviously these are very well known to uh, Dungeons and Dragons players. Um, however, what I, what I did was I made all of these stats not affect ca uh, combat. Uh, well, not, not affect combat so much as not affect, de affect the damage that you deal in combat. So when you do a normal Dungeons and Dragons campaign, you add a modifier based off your strength or your dexterity or your wisdom or charisma depending on the class you're playing. So first thing we did we removed the classes. There's no classes and there are just things that you know how to do and the, depending on how many points you know you put you know how to do it very well or in a mediocre fashion. Alright so strength is obvious. Uh, all these are pretty obvious. Strength is how strong you are. Constitution is how much you can, how much punishment you can take. Uh, then we have dexterity. Dexterity to show how um, you know, nimble and quick you are. Intellect is your knowledge of the general world. Wisdom is uh, wisdom has always confused me a little bit, but it's basically what you know about people. And so we have Charisma, which is similar to Wisdom, and it really is about people, um, but it's how you interact with those people, right? So this is all very basic. Most people know about these things. Um, and this is how we use non-damage stats in the non-combat non situations. Then we decided that the non-damage stats uh, needed a little bit more uh, importance. So what we did was we created a defensive system based around these major non-damage stats. So um, these are the, the the major things are like parry and block. Their parry is based off your strength. So if you are going to parry an attack instead of just letting it, letting it hit your armor class, um, you are going to be using your strength as a modifier to a d20 roll. Similarly, if you're going to block. You're going to be using your constitution. How well can you absorb the blow with your body and this shield? And so it's a contested roll, and you add your constitution modifier, uh, which is basically the number of points you've put into it. Then we have dodge, and uh, dodge works with dexterity, similar to how parry and, and, uh, and block work. Um, so dodge is a contested roll. You add your dexterity modifier. Uh, then we have intellect and wisdom. Intellect and Wisdom are going to be used depending on your magical style. So one of the things that we implemented was a magical defense. If you know magic, you can counter somebody's spell with your magic. Now, we didn't actually see any of that in the campaign that we were playing because, well, we didn't get very far. And uh, none of the opponents that the... That the, uh, that the players encountered had really any magic. So they were all, you know, hack and slash kind of people, and so they never really had a chance to use that. We still needed to stress test that. We're going to be doing that in this next campaign once everybody gets their characters. Um, and then charisma uh, is kind of lackluster when it comes to um, what is it called when it comes to combat. I did implement a faint type system where you before combat starts. You can feign that you are hurt. You can you can create a false sense of confidence in your opponents, and you can then take advantage of that. So there is something you can do with if you're if you're you know one of your main statistics is charisma. 
but there isn't really a whole lot uh, as far as combat. But uh, those are non-damage stats, so none of these really affect how much damage you do, but they do affect your defenses, and they do affect how you interact with the world. So that's what we have for our non-damage stats. Then we have our damage statistics, and um, we, we broke it down basically into magical damage statistics and physical combat damage statistics, right? And so, so a lot of these are uh, opposite magic, magical systems. So like earth is kind of opposite to wind. And then we have fire, which is opposite of water. Illusion and light is the opposite of spiritual magic. Illusion and light, you have to visualize everything that you're doing and you have to like understand how people see the world and how they interact with the world. And spiritual is the opposite of that. It's very like, I believe, and uh, you're interacting with these things that don't really exist, and they only exist in a different realm. So, you know, illusion is very here and now, showing you what's happening, and spiritual is kind of the opposite of that, just outside of the natural world. And then we have uh, necromantic magic and demonological magic, which is uh, the opposite of holy magic. Right? That makes sense. Anyways, um, here's actually I'm going to be I'm going to be showing you guys a graph of this because each of these uh, types of magics is either going to be either a order type magic or a magic that lends itself to order and uh, a chaotic magic. So an, the opposite would be the magic that lends itself to chaos. So things like fire and wind are very chaotic. The wind is very free-flowing. There's no order as is fire. Fire is very consuming. Um, then spiritual and uh, necromantic are also very chaotic. Um, the spirits are very like untamed and don't want to be tampered with and messed around with. They're very kind of free-flowing. And uh, obviously necrom necromantic and demonological magic has its chaotic qualities. And then we have holy, illusion and light, water and earth, very stable, um, very, very stable uh, kinds of magics. It very, lends itself to order more than chaos. So um, I'll be putting up a graph probably at the end of the video so you can see that. Anyways, um, if the, the, some, some, some problems came up, during the campaign where some people had ideas of spells that they wanted to do but they didn't know how because they didn't really fall into any of these categories so things like teleportation levitation uh, didn't really fall into one or, one or the other of the categories so uh, what I did was I made it so that in order to do some of these, you know, higher advanced magics, we actually had to combine different, um, different magics. So something like teleportation, it would require wind, it would require earth, and it would require uh, maybe a third of anything really to fuel the teleportation. And um, so this this way. You know, if, if there's anything that we forgot, anything that we didn't think of, something that our player wants to do, we can just say, okay, in order for you to do something like that, you need to combine these two or three different types of magics. Uh, so we're kind of trying to cover all of our bases. Remember, this is a, a new kind of system, and so there's going to be tweaks and things that need to be done. But, uh, but that's how that's working. And then we have physical combat. Um, so we'll talk about the general knowledges a little bit later, but first we have precision weapons. These are going to be like daggers, uh, certain types of bows, crossbows, small weapons that don't do a lot of damage, but, but well, they, I guess they do do a lot of damage, but they require very specific things to happen, very specific points to be targeted um, in order for them to be extremely effective. Then we have intermediate weapons. These are going to be your broad swords and your axes and regular one-handed weapon weapons that 
they obviously do damage. They don't really need to hit a specific point, but they're not so gargantuan that it doesn't matter where you hit. You still have to kind of know how to use it, use a little bit of your um, combat knowledge and dexterity together to do the damage. And then you have your weapon, heavy weapons. These are your claymores, your two-handed battle axes, uh, you know, two-handed maces, huge weapons that it just, all you have to do is swing it hard enough, and if it lands, it's going to do damage. All right, and so we actually made some rules for all of these, um, which I'll be going over in a separate video. But um, keep an eye out for that because they're pretty cool. Then we have the general knowledge. So general combat knowledge, I figure, is basically if you practice for your entire life with how to use a weapon, how to use how to how to com how to fight in combat. Eventually, you you get to understand how combat works in a general sense. Like, where if you have, uh, even though you may have never used a precision weapon, you have fought against people who have used ones. You've held one in your hand. You understand the weight of a, of something like that. You understand how fast somebody can move with it. Uh, and so this this lends itself to a general knowledge of combat and. Uh, the way it works in actual combat is when you attack, you add your general combat knowledge plus your weapon knowledge and into your hit, and then once you do damage, it's only your uh, weapon skill that gets added. So if, let's say, uh, Koyuki, right here, Koyuki uh, was using a katana, which is an intermediate weapon. And um, it's it's a one-handed weapon that is you know does damage, but it does all it can't just be swung for willy-nilly. So he was very focused on his katana. As you can see, he has no da no points in any kind of magic. He was very just the way of the blade kind of a character. So he put three points into his katana, and two points into general knowledge. So when he attacked, he had a plus five to hit, and if he did hit, then he had a plus three to the damage. Okay, so combat knowledge is to hit, general magical knowledge is also to hit, and uh, the, w the individual weapons have their um, damage bonuses. And then uh, we'll, let's look at a sealed door who ha was, had zero points in uh, physical combat, was very focused on uh, magic. He had uh, two points in wind magic, but uh, he didn't really specialize. He, he didn't really specify when he was creating his character um, what, like, that he knew about wind magic. He just said, I want to be able to do electrical, electricity type magic, which is fine. So uh, electricity lends itself to towards uh, wind magic. And so he had two points in the greater category wind, but he could only use those points in electrical magic. He also had two points in illusion and light, and he had one point in general magical knowledge. So being a, being around magic for so long, you kind of get un, you get an understanding for how it all works, and uh, that means that when he tried to use a, an electrical attack, he had a plus two from the wind magic, and he also had a plus one from general magical knowledge. So he would be rolling to hit a plus three, and if the damage hit, then he would add plus two to his damage. And that's how, that's pretty much how it all worked. Basically anything that uh, wasn't covered here, we kind of, uh, we kind of just added <laughs> as it went along. Um, we did have secondary stats, uh, which aren't really reflected here. This is the entire character sheet. And uh, none of the characters, except for Sealdor, came with a, a backstory that lent itself towards having a secondary statistics. Any, any secondary statistics. Uh, Isildur, if you look in our videos, you'll see he's always doing alchemy, alchemy stuff. He converted his caravan into an alchemical station, almost uh, a Walter White kind of <laughs> roll on, on a lab on wheels, which was pretty cool. Uh, and he was doing a lot of alchemy. And so when he first started, his alchemy level was level one. And after he did it a couple times, and he you know created potions, he actually rolled really high on almost all of his potion making. So uh, he he learned it pretty fast. 
and pretty soon he was able to increase his alchemy to plus two. So what I made him do was roll a d20, add his alchemy, and if the if what he rolled was high enough, he created a potion. And if he pre if he said anything before about what kind of a potion he wanted to make, I would try to guide it towards that, depending on how high of a roll he made. Um, and if not, uh, whatever whatever rolls were high enough, I just said, okay, you made this pretty interesting potion. Depending on, it really just depends on his rolls. Um, so that was interesting. And so um, the way that secondary this works is, if you're if you see that the character is doing this a lot, and you can consider it a secondary statistic. Um, then you just give it to them, and you start at plus one, and the more they do it, the more the, the better they get at it. And it really has, it doesn't have anything to do with levels. And it doesn't have anything to do with you know points. You don't get points to put into alchemy when they level up like they would into their damage statistics and non-damage statistics. It's really based off how often they do it. So uh, a prime example of somebody who was going to get a um, uh, secondary statistic was Pixie. Uh, Pixie was a half dragon who had wings, and she was using her wings a lot in combat, and um, was getting to the point where every time that she wanted to do something cool, like she would use her wings, and I always made her do a roll on it, and I figured, you know, if if she's going to be using her wings all the time, then I should give her a winged combat or a flying combat uh, secondary attribute. And then she can just practice and practice and get better at it. And it's just something that we thought would be pretty cool. So I was going to give her that actually in the next episode, but she ended up killing herself. So <laughs> that didn't really go according to plan. But um, hey, that's that's D&D for you. You never really know what's going to happen next. So uh, yeah, we've explained non-damage stats, damage statistics, secondary statistics. And... Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty self-explanatory. Once again, we made this so that you could do whatever you wanted with the system. It's basically just create whatever you want. How how do you want how you want your world to work? And we have obviously guidelines and rules. Not really rules, just guidelines onto how it could work. And if you don't like it, you can change it. It's really really. Um, really based on the DM and the players and how they want to do things so thanks for watching um, stay tuned for the other videos I'm going to be explaining the physical combat the magical combat and the defenses in another video and uh, those are pretty interesting because it, it does get a little it does get a bit complicated and um, you know a lot of a lot of combat situations if people uh, when they first started they didn't really understand what was going on but yeah stay tuned for that video it's gonna be pretty cool uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, and uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Hope Betrayed. If you're watching this video, just you know, click on my name and click subscribe. <laughs> and um, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.